So it's been a long time since my last video, and I know I said I was going to build a few RC trucks over the winter, but uh, I live in the west coast of uh, British Columbia, and we had a really mild winter this year, so instead of hiding in my hobby room and working on RC stuff, I decided to work in my shop and build a jaw crusher. So this is basically what I came up with. Um, it turned out okay. It was a lot of trial and error. I definitely made lots of mistakes. Um, I looked online at what people were selling and how much they were going for and I decided that I could probably save some money and, and build one myself. So basically it's a uh, four inch by four and a half, five, somewhere in there. Uh, just steel plate with hard surfacing welding on it. Um, like I said, definitely a lot of trial and error. I, uh, it was supposed to be a lot smaller when I ordered all my parts. And then they got a little bit bigger and then a little bit bigger and then a little bit bigger. And so uh, the, the one thing that I, did, I went with is a little bit different is I figured I'd pu uh, put pulleys on both sides and, and uh, not put as much strain on the shaft and pull evenly on each side. And uh, so I had uh, the first go around, uh, I didn't have the bearings on the inside, I just had the bearings on the outside. And I ended up bending the shaft because instead of crushing the rocks, it, it just it was easier to bend the shaft. So so that's what happened. So I had to put bearings in the middle. Uh, another big mistake I made is I used some scrap steel that I just found to try to keep the cost down. And some of it was tempered, some of it wasn't, some of it, it was just a disaster. I, uh, I shouldn't have went that route and just bought everything. Uh, another mistake is uh, the shaft, like I say, it was supposed to be a lot smaller, so I only went with a three quarter inch shaft hardened steel shaft and uh, it's too small now so so I gotta kind of take it easy on what I put through it and uh, not work it too hard so I don't bend uh, or break another shaft another thing I did is the wedge bar was set too low originally so it just kind of rubbed the rocks and and uh, now it, that I moved it up and I had to weld the cut these off and weld them on again and there's a little bit of messing around but it seems to work okay now um, uh, I went with Two sets of pulleys, different pulleys, so I could change different RPMs and and uh, speed it up, slow it down, depending on the jaw gap. If you tighten the jaw gap up, you really got to speed it up, or else the material just falls through. Uh, the motor is a two horsepower uh, from Princess Auto or a Harbor Freight here in the U.S. I had a three-quarter horse on it; it wasn't it wasn't strong enough. It uh, it just kept cutting out. So the little handles on it. Got some stickers made up for it, but uh, it, it works okay. Let's turn it on here. I have a little door, inspection door down here. Like, so, so the material comes out, you know, it's three eighths, you know, half inch, so something like that, a little bit. Some of it's quarter. Some of it's, some of it's fairly fine, but it's uh, not good enough for what I need anyway. So instead of tightening the jaw gap and, uh, and at risk of wrecking more stuff on it, I uh, went on YouTube and I found a guy called that Ask Jeff Williams. And he has his own website, askjeffwilliams.com, and he built this impact mill. And basically, I just copied it pretty much exactly to what he, how he built his. Uh, my original plan was to uh, have a gas-powered engine on it, which means I'd have to change the rotation you know, that it is. And uh, so that was my original plan. And then I kind of lost focus, and I ended up building it exactly how Jeff did, and and uh, kind of messed that part up. But but that's okay. So I would have had to move the hopper to this side so I could change the rotation and then move the crusher to this side of the cart, put the motor underneath and then have a gas engine on this side and basically have a hybrid. So if it was too loud that I couldn't use it in the shop, then I would take it elsewhere and, and use it elsewhere. And if it didn't have power, then I could just use the gas powered engine. But uh, it, it actually is it's not as loud as, as I was expecting. It's, uh, it's not horribly loud. 
neighbors, the neighbors aren't complaining anyway. So basically it's a hardened shaft, one inch uh, steel bar that goes through and then hardened steel chains inside that basically it takes the material uh, down to powder. And then I have uh, slits, I took a zip wheel and cut slits through the drum and then enclosed them in this block. And then I just have vacuum hose on it. And on the back, I just uh, drilled some holes through the plate and then mounted that tube on it with a vacuum hose. And then it goes inside a bucket and then it goes into that another bucket that has water in it and then another bucket that has water in it and then from there it goes into an ash vac which is basically a, a metal vacuum cleaner that's used for vacuuming up your uh, fireplaces and wood stoves. This one specifically is a piece of shit. I should have never bought it. I bought it because it was metal and it had a filter and then if I wanted to take the, the crusher out I could uh, mount a leaf blower on it to make a gas vac out of it. But uh, I kind of messed that plan up. There's a rock I still have to crush. Uh, for work, I work in road construction. I was a driller blaster and uh, drive rock truck and excavator. So basically we're in new areas that haven't been uh, explored too much. So especially when you start drilling and blasting uh, through rock faces and what have you. So basically I just leave a bucket on a machine and go grab quartz samples and mineralized rock whenever I find it. Uh, depending on where you go, you know, depending on the land, if it's First Nation land, you you have to respect that and you, so you don't touch anything there. Uh, same thing if somebody owns the mineral rights to it, you, you can't touch that stuff. But it's basically, you know, unexplored places or places that aren't claimed and then uh, just take samples and test them and see, you know, you never might stick a claim one day, you never know. So the motor on this one is a 5 horsepower 220 single phase. I have two belts on it. Bell guard. So I'm happy how it turned out. It was a lot of work. It took a long time. So the other thing that I picked up was a Falcon uh, MD20 metal detector. And actually I just leave it in my bag. <clears throat> and if I find a sample that looks promising, I'll just uh, use the metal detector <clears throat> and just touch it. And it, even if there's just a small flake of, of gold in it, it'll detect it. And uh, it works really good, and it's nice and small. So if you haven't seen it, uh, seen it, check it out on YouTube. They're they're actually they work really good. So, so basically, once the material comes out of the impact mill, it's it's basically a fine dust or almost like flour. So uh, I take it and I run it through the gold cube, and the gold cube's basically same as any other gold cube, nothing special. The only thing that I I do a little bit different <clears throat> is I uh, take some PVC pipe. And I have it filled with magnets that I got off eBay. And then I just uh, hot glue the ends and uh, just so it'll stay wedged into the gold cube there. And then it picks up any black sand or, or iron that goes through and keeps it from filling your mats up right off the chute and, and uh, kind of gets it out of your system before you start classifying and, and trying to uh, process it any further. So once it goes through gold cube, you classify it and I run it in a gold lab. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, the gold lab I built with my daughter a couple years ago. So there was a little bit of gold in there, not too much. <clears throat> uh, you can buy it online. Uh, I believe his name is Dave from thegoldlab.com. He sells them. And uh, what's really nice about it is everything folds up and fits inside that Rubbermaid tote. So uh, I basically copied his his uh, plan there and, and built my own. I did change a few things. Uh, his the the bowl rests on this lip and I put a aluminum plate down so I can put the bolts on it and level it just in case I'm outside or the grounds not level I can keep my make sure my bowl is level all the time and uh, basically all it is is just a simple blue bowl uh, your material finer material goes up the bowl down the inside and then I have a funnel that it drops into goes into a tube and then drops into a sluice and then the sluice just uh, Keep some material in case you did lose some fine gold and it goes into a bucket so you can take it and keep cleaning your sluice out and if you do lose something or you mess up and uh, you can just keep running the material so you get all your fine gold. Uh, another thing that I did that's a little bit different is I put a chair vibrator on it and uh, the little button here so 
basically when you're doing your final cleanup and the last little bits working its way up you can kind of shake the bowl and kind of uh, mix things up a little bit and loosen them up and, and get them to go up the bowl a little easier so basically <clears throat> it's it's got lots of bells and whistles and it looks all fancy dancy but it's basically just a bunch of parts that you can get from home depot or lowe's but by the time you add everything together and you gather up all your parts and order the blue bowl and everything it, for what uh, Dave sells it on his website, it's actually a pretty good price. Uh, it did cost me a lot more than I thought it would to make. And uh, I like I say, I do live in Canada, so the, the price of duty and, and uh, exchange on the Canadian dollar was, was really bad at that time. Uh, so that's why I didn't buy it from Dave and I just decided to build my own. But if I had to do it again, I think I probably would just get it off Dave. So, and as far as that goes, as far as building... Uh, the two crushers, I, if I had to do it again, I don't think I would. It, it took way, way long, longer than I thought it was going to take. And uh, sometimes you just got to put a price on your time. And uh, I talked to uh, Steve at uh, Mount Baker Mines and Metals, and they sell a laboratory crusher 5x6, I think it is. And, uh, you know, same thing, uh, same gripe I always have is the, the price of, you know, duty and on exchange on the Canadian dollar, but it uh, it was definitely worth looking at. Because now, if I, if something wrecks on this, I gotta Mickey Mouse it together and hook it where if I had a decent quality machine to start with, you know, I wouldn't have that problem. And they sell impact crushers, they sell shaker tables, they sell everything. And uh, they're in Washington. It's actually, you know, just a ferry ride and a bit of a drive for me away. So, I, I think I would probably have tried, tried that out. You know, if um, I started building these in, uh, over the Christmas holidays, and it's the end of May now, so basically all my weekends for five months. You know, I only took a few days off and, uh, from working out in the shop, so that's definitely something to think about next time, because the other thing was the cost. You know, I did get a good deal on a lot of the stuff, and they still pro probably cost me $1,000 each and materials so you know zip wheels grinding wheels uh, welding supplies you know wheels and paint and all those little things add up and then they it did get very expensive so something to think about if you if you're considering buying one uh, I did actually come across a guy in Canada uh, Pavestone Creations I believe his name is Matt and he makes a really nice little jaw crusher I believe he calls them the mini might and the mini max and for you know it's a lot smaller than this one but if somebody was interested in just uh, on a weekend hobby doing it in their basement kind of thing and going out with the kids and finding some samples and just just smaller rock two inch kind of rock kind of thing you know um, Matt would definitely be somebody to look at I believe he sells them on eBay too uh, under mini might and mini max but uh, I thought his prices were a little expensive until I built my own and his prices are actually pretty reasonable so definitely something to think about if you're interested in getting one or building your own. But uh, anyway, if you have any comments or questions, uh, feel free to post something and I'll be happy to answer them if I can. Okay, thanks a lot.